Thank you for joining us as Levi continues our Bible study of the eternal Word of God, as written in the Holy Bible. All right. It has been a weird one. I will tell you that right now. Through and through. Tonight, uh, we're not jumping into Genesis. It's going to be Isaiah 58. The title is Taking an Inventory. All right. And so as you go across the street, keep in mind, or if you do, or if you're outside, the people across the street, don't interact with them. They're a cult. All right. They're called the Potter's House. They're 100% a cult. They have a militia. They're only interested in the military for the militia. And they always come in here and interrupt. And so our security knows if they try to come in, they're not letting them in. They have no respect for any other church or any other group. And they think everyone else is going to hell except for their little church. So apparently they don't know how they read the Bible. Beware of them. All right. They're also known as the Door Fellowship. Okay. So um, now let me start by saying this again. We're revisiting this for those who missed it online because we started this in, in 2023. And it started like this. Um, at the time I was seeking the Lord and asking what would it look like if we were to reach the military in a scale that the hippies were reached in the 60s and 70s, all right? What would it look like for the Lord to do an outpouring like that again? And what would it look like for God to use us in a capability and a capacity for military ministry uh, and what we could do in that area? Because there are many military ministries out there. They're all attached to churches. And if you ever, you know, everyone here on Sunday usually goes to a different church or sometimes you guys see this is your church. We're very different in, in the fact that we do everything on Friday and then I leave it open for Sundays for other places because I don't want to be in competition with them. I feel sometimes churches are just competing for numbers to sit in their pews to see who's the biggest. All right. And everything's missed. Even sometimes when they when they want to do good, they end up just making a mess of everything. All right. You ever experienced that? They mean well, they say the wrong thing, or they're overly aggressive at the top, and next thing you know, I just do, like, I don't, I don't need that, all right? And I've been praying, what would it look like to reach that community? The military is a very, very different community. Most of us are military, serve the military, currently in the military, something. It's got its own culture, its own humor, its own, its own everything. And even within the branches of service, I mean, there's this di difference, all right? Marines are seen as the more aggressive and everything, where the Air Force is more the cushy. And yes, we bust each other's chops on it, but I'm not going to lie. An Air Force child is pretty nice in Kazakhstan in the middle of nowhere. All right, so 4 o'clock in the morning when you're hungry. It's just, it's just the truth, all right? Now, so, but what would it be like to reach the military community? And so that was the thing that started with 2023 about praying about this and where we're going. And now here we are ending July, going into August. And all that beautiful June gloom, coolness has now gone away. And the August heat is here. Man, it is warm, right? So Isaiah 58 was what the Lord gave me back at the beginning. I want to recap it. For you that are new, you're going to take some things to heart that was mentioned at the beginning. I'm not just going to give you the same stuff. For everyone who was there at the beginning, the questions are going to get harder for you. To really examine where you're at, and I want you to apply it to your life, all right? Does that make sense? Okay, so starting off right now in verse 1, Isaiah 58 says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, tell my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins, okay? So again, here's what it comes down to, each one of us examining where we are in our walk with the Lord, okay? And I talked about this back at the beginning of the year to examine your walk going into it, the year. Now, seven months have gone by. Can you say clearly where you are with the Lord in your walk? For some of you, this is brand new. Some of you are like, maybe I'm a baby Christian. Some of you are like, uh, I kind of just started really seriously walking with the Lord in the last few weeks or the last uh, few months. Some of you are like, hey, I I'm here in town. I'm visiting. I've been walking with the Lord strong for years, but yes, I'm always willing to go deeper. And the thing is, it's this examine our walk. All right. And, and I want each one of us that it comes down to that. The Lord would show us. This is what I talked about at the beginning. And here's what I can tell you. 
My walk with the Lord has gotten stronger this year. It has ups and downs. I feel beat up, but I feel good. I have crazy weeks, but good. This week's been crazy. I'll tell you that right now. Spiritually, it's been nuts. All right. From people getting sick to the enemy attacking left and right to just just madness across the board of things that are going on. But the Lord is using the place. We are growing. And the Lord has a plan where we're, we're, we're moving towards and the leadership that's growing. And I'm praying about it. But each person has to examine where they are in their walk. It's not cushy. Okay. Your walk with Christ should never be cushy. It, it, there will be moments like these sweet valleys with nice grass and you'll go through those. And then times where it's these hard rocks and just like, what am I doing in this place? And I think sometimes we, we, we ask the Lord, like, why am I going through the harder than the easier sometimes? Well, sometimes we're just stubborn. Sometimes it's the enemy attacking us left and right. But it happens. It happens. And there's this constant battle. All right. And then again, letting the Lord show us where we fall short in sin and how to overcome. That's a big one. And it's not an easy one. But the Lord has been showing me how to stay strong in certain areas of my life. Areas that kicked my butt years ago, I have overcome because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And I pray the same for you, that you're starting to overcome sin in your life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because you can only do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no other way. You can't, you, you can't do any other way of it. New Year's resolutions, did you keep them? No. no. Didn't some of you didn't make them, some of you did. and went nowhere, right? The gyms were filled at the beginning of January. And now, now they're trying to sell you, <laughs> you know? Okay, but again, walking in Jesus with Jesus in a strong relationship. Okay, verse two through five goes on to say, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinances of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching God. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you have not, you have taken no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploits at your uh, laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate and you strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Verse five, is it a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Or is it to bow down his head like a bulrush or to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast an acceptable day to the Lord? Now, again, it's not about doing religious stuff. A lot of people get stuck on religious stuff. All right. And that's not what this is about. Okay. Sometimes we think of it as like, it's, we got to grow numbers and grow numbers and grow numbers. So let's say we pack the place out. Let's say we pack it out so much. There's no more room that we need a new spot. But if no one grows in Christ, what's the purpose? Okay. Because. Think of all the big mega churches. Some of them are solid. I can name a few that are really solid and they're big. They're massive. But even in those that are massive and big, you have people lost in the mix of just doing religion. I rather have it that you grow in depth in Christ to know how to walk in Christ and know how to, to be in Christ than just religious stuff. Because Everywhere offers you religious stuff. You, you Buddhists do religious stuff. Muslims are religious. I mean, they're so religious, they'll blow themselves up yeah. for religious stuff. Well, at least some of them will. You know, the, you guys have been paying attention to me that they're, they're outside these embassies banging on their chest because of a Quran that was burned in Sweden. I mean, they do religious stuff. There, there's all kinds of religious stuff, but what is it? What will religious stuff do for you? It will kill you in the end. Because it's, it's a heavy weight you can't keep. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about a relationship with the Lord. 
And I want each one of you to be encouraged to walk deeper with the Lord, to know what he has for you. So the question is, so at the beginning of the year, we started with this challenge. The, the question is for you guys who've been here since the beginning of the year, do you know where the Lord's taking you? Do you know where he's transforming you? And the cool thing is, is you may have been like, hey, I wasn't here at the beginning of the year, but to be honest with you, my devotional time changed. Like things got stronger with the Lord and how I walk with him. And it, and it has at this place. It has. I, I will explain all of it as we go along. But to encourage you, you know, to know where things are going with him. So, so the thing is, is I'm praying about where we're going. I'm praying about who the Lord's building up. Notice every Friday I want to pray about the provisions and who the leadership. I have a whole system I'm using to figure out, <coughs> excuse me, what the Lord's doing. It's all by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no program to it. Some people, they want to use a cookie cutter program to, to say, if you do like this, you'll grow better. This isn't about, again, growing numbers. The Lord will bring the people, but it's about growing in the depth of Christ to know where you're going with him. So the question is, and again, you don't have to raise your hand, but I want you to take notes or think about it or, or go examine it later. Put it in your brain. Where am I going with the Lord? Do you know? Do you know where he's taking you? Is he, is he calling you to ministry? Is he calling you into, out of the military? Is he calling you to another section of the military to get married? Is he calling you to stay single? If you're married and you're like, he's calling me to stay single, liar, liar, pants on fire. All right. All right. Now, is he calling you to move out of the state? Is he calling you to stay in the state? Don't lie, Matt. Is he calling you to stay in the state? All right. Where is he calling you? Because I've had, I'll tell you this, someone offered, I got offered twice two senior pastor positions. I turned them down. One was in Tennessee because the Lord wasn't in it. The Lord said, stay in California. I'm using you here. You stay here. But you have to know clearly. It, it looked good. The offer looked good. Even the offer for the other ones in California, in San Diego and in Corona. They look good. But the Lord's not in it. It's not the calling for me. This is the calling for me. See, do you know where you're going? No, some of you didn't even know that, did you? Yeah. Because I don't make a big deal about it if the Lord's not in it. All right? So, to encourage the walk where you're going, it's about letting people know that you have a desire to grow in the Lord, to grow uh, in Him. Again, not by legalism, not by trying to be religious, but a walk with Him. And again, are you growing in the Lord? Have you discovered you know the Bible better? Have you discovered you have the Bible memorized the sections better? Are you discovering that you're getting stronger in sharing the gospel? That you're bolder to share the gospel? All right? That's the key. Are you discovering that maybe the F-bombs aren't coming out as much? Or the other cuss words aren't coming as much? Your anger is subsiding. All right? Or maybe you're learning to say no to lust. No to things that have a grip. All of a sudden, you're recognizing it's coming out of nowhere that you can say no to the things that held a grip on you. And that's that growth, all right? That's that growth that we're talking about. Again, it's so important that we understand this. Maybe your devotional time has gotten better. Maybe you're like, wow, I'm actually consistent pretty much every day. I, I went from like, I thought I'd just read on Sundays at church to, you know, I'm reading Monday through Friday pretty good here. I struggle a bit on Saturdays because I like to sleep in or something. Or maybe you're discovering you're actually making it to church on time. All right. Or you're, you're getting more involved. Okay. At the anchor, which we'll talk about that in a minute. So verses eight through 12 go on to say this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I still got this tickle. that's kicking in my butt here. <clears throat> then your light shall break through like the morning. And your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call on the Lord. Excuse me. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and the speaking wickedness. Verse 10, if you extend 
your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul. Then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose water does not fall, uh, fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to dwell in. All right, let's take a look. This is, this is the key. This is the deep part right here. So notice how it's talking about telling people, you know, about their sin, standing fast, knowing where you're growing in the Lord. But the key is the gospel. It has always been about the gospel about this place. Since 1951, when this place started with the four guys that were helping the Marines head to the Korean War, it's always been about the gospel. It's always about how to deliver the gospel. And everyone's got their own style. They have tried uh, the tracks in here. They went well for a while till they didn't. They, they have tried the very aggressive direct approach where your sandwich is halfway down your throat and they're telling you about Jesus and you have time to, to think about what's happening. That one didn't work well. All right. There, everyone has a style to it, but the Lord is refining the style. He's refining how to give the gospel. He's refining how to reach each individual. Each one of you here has come to the anchor. You're here because, not because of me, not because the artwork or, you know, the latest music or that we got these amazing video game systems or TV it has nothing to do with that. Because if that was the case, you could go to any other place that has that. All right. Remember arcades? I miss arcades. Anyway, so. Yeah. Listen. Has everything to do with the Lord's doing in your life and that the Holy Spirit's been working in you? Has everything to do that the Lord's changing you and there's growth and you're hungry and that the Lord is using this place to give you the gospel and to grow in Christ, to grow in the word, to know the word in depth, to, to everything I've been taught through Calvary Chapel, learning under the Calvary Chapel teachers, learning under Chuck Smith, learning under Raul Reese, Ray Bentley, Adam Riojas, all those, those four guys teaching me, each one refining because from Adam to each one, the refining, refining. To every other thing that from the Jewish side, from a Hebrew teacher to learning the depth of the Hebrew to connecting all the dots is to show you guys how to grow in Christ, adapting it all in there. So you grow in depth. So you know how to use this, but it's on you and how much time you spend in the word and with Christ that you'll grow. Think about this for a minute. If you, if you come across a guy who's yoked, who goes to the gym and he's like all muscle, and you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta get huge like that, or I gotta get toned like that, or I gotta be able to run like that. And you're like, I think I'll just go to the gym once a week. Nothing will happen. Usually those guys are dedicated to the gym almost every day, if not every other day, right? They are, they're putting in, I mean, they know techniques you never even heard about. And it's almost the same with the Bible because as you're going to the Bible and then you got the basics of the milk, then you meet someone who knows the depth of the Bible and you're like, man, how did you connect from there to there to there to there? And you want them to show you. And in the beginning, I remember the beginning when I was learning this, it was like drinking out of a fire hydrant. And I was just like, oh man, this is a lot to take in. But after a while, it didn't feel like a fire hydrant anymore. It just felt like a normal glass of water until I hit the next depth level of trying to learn things. And then I get to Hebrew and it's like drinking out of a fire hydrant again, right? So... It's about growing. Now, I want to show you this, and I want you guys to just examine some things, all right? Number one, it's loving people and telling them the truth. Not winning the argument. So the question I have is, do you love people? Okay? If you love people, you would tell them the truth. You tell them in love. It's not screaming and yelling. You'd be a light of the Holy Spirit showing it, right? But let's go back and look at this. Verse 8, then... Your light shall break forth like the morning. All right. The light that the Holy Spirit has in us will break forth. People will see a difference in you. They'll look at you and be like, man, something's really different. Why are they different? Why do they conduct themselves the way they do? Why do they know how to be like, like they, they have the answer? Because the answer is in you too. 
It's Jesus. Because the answer is in you, it's Jesus, right? And your healing shall spring forth speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. Again, you have the light. There's healing. That healing brings righteousness. People start to see the difference. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. You'll be protected constantly. Don't fear those that can destroy your body, but fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. So don't be afraid, all right, to stand firm. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call on the Lord. You shall call and the Lord will answer. When you call on the Lord, he will answer. So how's your prayer life? This goes back to the question of your prayer life. Are you praying every day? Is it rough? I'll be honest with you. I have moments where it's really good, moments where it's really bad. I have moments where I'm talking to the Lord constantly and moments where I'm just like, I feel like the enemy is like grabbing my face and I can't get words out. So I have a prayer team. We meet the last Saturday or the fourth Saturday every month right at this table. We pray about things that are going on in the anchor. We pray about changes that are happening in the anchor. We pray for people that we're seeing potential in. We pray about families and what we see what's going on, situations that's happening. I have prayer team members that are in other states because they don't have to be right here in this building. We let them know what's going on. When we have a serious situation, I have a system I use. I ask them to pray. So if you have a gift of prayer and you like to pray, come see me. Over and over in the announcements, we say, if you, if you like to pray, we like to see if you want to come and pray. We pray before we open up. But now that this prayer team meets on the Saturday, that's just one time. And the thing is, is, is it's all about systematic prayer. That we, we are uh, praying specifically for things that are going on. And you call on the Lord, He will hear you. If you got issues going on in your life, pray. Start praying. Ask the Lord to help you. Speak to you to, to the Word. To help you through trials. To help you through when people are speaking against you. To every little thing that he would be a rear guard, that he would defend you, right? And that you would use wisdom in each situation, that you would know what to do. Look what it says. It says, you will cry and he will say, here I am. All right. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of finger and speaking of wickedness. So in other words, as we're seeking the Lord and we stop making excuses, so ask yourself, what excuses are you making this year? What excuses have you said? Well, you know, next time I'll do it. Well, I'll read a little bit more. Well, I'll make it to the next Bible study. What excuses do you keep making? And the thing is, is I know, look, everybody goes, well, you're the pastor. Well, you run the place. Well, you, I can't do this alone. I need a team. That's why the Lord's building a team. There's teams that are built up certain ways. But, but if you undercut any member of the team or the, they, they go down, guess what happens to the rest? It, it collapses. Think about it for a minute. If I collapse in sin and I jack myself up horrendously, what will happen to you? Yes. Will you bounce back? Probably yes. But man, you will be so frustrated. You'll be like, I don't get it, man. I, I, like we were learning years and he did what? I'm so confused. That's why I take this extremely serious. That's why my wife looked at me and goes, man, if you're going to do something stupid, step down, then go be stupid. <laughs> it's good advice. <laughs> but I would never do that. I have seen pastors destroy themselves. I have seen pastors wipe out whole churches. I will never do that. I take it serious. So it's so important that Again, going back to letting the Lord examine your heart. Where are you going? What are you doing, right? So, the Lord's opening the doors for the gospel. The Lord is opening the doors for the gospel on base. For the gospel for the people coming in here, meeting different people. The thing that I want each one of you to understand is, are you being sensitive to those doors that are opening? Because you could be like, well, that's, that's Levi's job. He's the pastor. He shares the gospel. No, you... Share the gospel. You have a calling to each one. Do you know you're all called to be an evangelist? Each one of you. Maybe not some big one like Greg Laurie. Maybe not some well-known evangelist. But even to your neighbor at work, something. Your job is to share the gospel in some form. 
not in a form that's obnoxious, not in a form that's winning the argument, in a form that they know and walk in love. And again, it's not a two-faced thing. This is not a, as I'm with the Bible group, I'm one way and I'm at work, I'm another way. You'll lose them. You'll lose them because then they'll be like, you go to church? Dude, the way you were talking yesterday, I, I would have swore you never went to church. You never want that to happen. You never want them to be shocked that you know Jesus because at work you dropped the F-bomb all week and then you come and be like, praise Jesus. And, and I've met, I, unfortunately, I met Marines like that. And I actually called out a staff sergeant one time about it. And then she was like, well, when I'm on Camp Pendleton, I'm a Marine. I'm not a Christian. And I was like, well, there's your problem right there. You are a Christian following Jesus no matter where you go, whether Camp Pendleton or off Camp Pendleton. And she would be in the front row to church. Amen. And then I heard her. I'm in the parking lot. And she's like, you mother. I'm like, whoa, you kiss your mother with that mouth. So, so, so now. The Lord will protect us. He'll guard us from spiritual danger. We've been seeing it left and right. The enemy's been attacking left and right. Again, people getting sick. Some of it's just physical. Some of it's been spiritual. Uh, attacking in dreams. I've seen it. Funky nightmares. Demonic stuff. I'll tell you right now, my wife saw two demons when we were on the train. Because they came out of LAX. I mean, crazy stuff going on. That, that the things are getting worse in this world. And if you don't hold fast to Christ, you're going to have all kinds of problems. You have to hold firm to this. Hold firm to what the Lord is doing. Now you may be like, well, Levi, I don't experience that. It's, everyone's gift's different. But we have to be in prayer about what's going on. There's people who are hungry for the gospel. And, and we have to understand the Lord will protect us each way as we grow. And as we grow, it's going to get worse. You guys are aware of this, right? The bigger you grow in Christ, the worse the target you get, all right? And things will happen. And the things that were destroyed are being rebuilt. So let me, let me read the last two verses, and then I'm going to share some other things with you. So it goes on to say, If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, part of this I had talked about at the beginning was the Bible study. That if you find it a joy... If you're growing, go tell people, not so we grow in numbers, but that they can grow in Christ. Because if you're excited about Jesus and what you're learning about Jesus, go tell people what you're learning. And that way, when they're like, whoa, where did you learn that? I said, the anchor, man. Come on, check it out. And they may be like, well, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to go. Well, come on. Blah, blah, blah. I don't go. And sometimes we get to the point where like, I'm just not going to ask this dude anymore. I've been there. I have been there where I just give up on asking someone. And finally, I'm like, Lord's like, one more time, ask him. And that one's like, okay, I'll be there. And they show up. And everything changes from there. All right? So if you're growing in Christ, you decide, tell them. If they're in another state, tell them. Again, it's not about numbers. It's not about popularity. It's not about getting my name out there. I don't care. We could put a curtain up. No one could ever see my face. I don't care. All right? If God can use a donkey to speak, who am I? I'm a nobody. All right? It's never been about being famous. It's never been about being on a billboard or being like, oh, that's Pastor so-and-so. And unfortunately, there's places like that because they grow. All right? Even, I'll tell you, Raul hates it. He says it. He hates it. He'll be shopping. He'll be talking to his wife or one of the grandkids. And someone in the other aisle will be like, oh, I know that voice. And they'll pop around the corner like, are you Pastor Raul? And he's like, oh. Because he just wants to shop. <laughs> he's like, he just wants to get through the shopping. But it is a blessing to, to meet people and, and help them grow and, and, and see where they're going. So the reason we're doing an inventory of this and where we're going is this. And the reason I'm cutting it like short, I'm not going into details like I did before. If you want, go back to the one that's called Anchor 2023 and forward. There's more details than that. But it's, I want you to examine where we are. I want you to examine where we're growing. And, and if you're unaware... By either you're like new or you're like, well, to be honest with you, I can't remember what I ate last week. 
then you really probably need to see what you're doing with the Lord if you don't know where you're going. Listen, I'll tell you what's going on. All right. First and foremost, Tuesday night's changing. We have a Tuesday night Bible study. We're going to the book of Judges, but I've been noticing this battle back and forth with it. Now, it's your everyday stuff that's going on. I totally get it. It has nothing to do with anyone. So as I bring up details of things, it has nothing to do with what anyone did or didn't do, but I've been praying and watching. I know there's a change coming to Tuesday. It's either going to come to a halt and switch, or it's going to go into a break and something's going to switch. I already know it's happening. All right. So there is a pattern of that that's going to happen. I'm praying through what will happen with it. All right. It's been good. It's been going for how long now, Mike? Four years, five years. So it's been going five years at the Albanese's house faithfully, but a lot's been happening in their life with property in Idaho. And then I've been noticing these changes and it's more than just your typical like we do a break for Thanksgiving and Christmas, as you know, this place, because it becomes a ghost town. But the Lord is switching something up. So I'm praying through Tuesday. What's going to happen? What's going to change? Where are we going with this? Where, where's the big changes that are going to come? Wednesday is my study day, if you guys are not aware. So the Lord has really, I've, that's where I study for Friday. It's where I, I prep. If you guys are not aware, I try to stay ahead of the curve. So we're in Genesis 40. We're going to be wrapping up Genesis 40 next week. But I'm already working on Genesis 43. I'm already four months ahead of schedule of all the teachings. All right? Because the Lord just has me work that way. But I also know the Lord had put on my heart to start doing more time in the Word on a daily basis of going through things just to pull certain aspects either for devotional. Because if you guys notice, I haven't written a devotional in over a year. Anybody caught on to that? Something happened. And it's not for lack of trying. I'm not trying to force it. It's not nothing standing out in the word, but the, the years of like it would pop and I could write, we're going and it stopped all of a sudden as it stopped prayer time went different. And then what has happened now is the Lord's like, okay, I want you to go through these books and you either, if you have nothing written, you're going to start writing Bible studies in them. If you do, you're going to modify them into a devotional book. So I'm waiting to see what happens. The Lord also put on my heart to write another piece called First the Natural and the Supernatural, talking about how the two mirror each other. But I'm working through that. The newsletter is changing. We're going through massive changes in the newsletter. So me and David have sat down. What changes are we going to make? Doing pieces about people. So we've been doing little, little updates about what's going on. And, the, and you can see in the newsletter, like the baptism and everything. And there was a time we would do testimonies. It switched. And now it's like we need to do little segments about who's who and what's about to happen because the teams are building. All right. So the newsletter is changing. So Wednesday, I do my study in the morning. I always meet with John at lunch. We discuss things. I have someone I meet with in the afternoon. We're going to see where that goes because the Lord's either going to increase it or decrease it in there. I've been looking at how my devotional life with my wife's getting consistent and strong. I, I, We've been through the Bible, I don't know, it's like the 12th or 13th time now. And things are, are maneuvering again. I would encourage each one of you married, try to go through the Word with your wife. If you're not married, go through the Word on your own. Get through the whole thing. You know, don't jump all over the place. Pick a book, finish it out. Do one in the old, one in the new. And this, and this is what I would encourage you with. I started, when I started doing devotionals growing, I was reading like one book. So I would read like out of Matthew, one chapter, that was it. Think about that. Then I started getting stronger and I started doing one of the old, one of the new, one of the old, one of the new. And then I remember Adam was telling me one day, he's like, it's him and Scott were like, hey, we do one old, one new Proverbs and a Psalm. And I was like, dude, that's a lot to read. Yeah, it's not that bad. So then the men's group started. So it was starting with just a group that needed to learn the Bible. And I noticed only men showed up. And I was willing to have it be co-ed, but as the men got stronger and stronger and the subjects got deeper and deeper, I said, this is guys only. So we do one of the old, one of the new, a psalm and a problem, that proverb, that's how it started. But that's now where we're at, where we are in Exodus, we're in the Gospel of John, we're in Psalms because it's 150 chapters, and now we're in Isaiah to complete the whole thing, go back through, complete the whole thing, go back through. And the men's group fluctuates. I'm praying about what the Lord will do. There's times this whole table is packed out. 
There's times there's maybe three of us. But I'm going to keep going through it. And then there's Bible training on Thursday nights and hand selecting who's going through that. And then we're going to see what happens through that. So the Lord is maneuvering everything. The Lord is maneuvering Friday nights. There's a prayer team that goes in there and prays prior. There's a prayer team that's somewhere else. Saturdays are changing. We're, we're feeding tons and tons of people. So far, we've fed over, made over a thousand sandwiches and over a thousand shakes. And it's just only July. And, and they're coming in and coming in. We're working with Camp Pendleton on, on different ways. We're praying about what this looks like and where we're going and the doors that are opening. I don't know what next year will look like. I'm going to tell you this year. But what I can tell you is the Lord is building teams. All right. And, and the thing is, it was very interesting because the Lord started to speak to me in a dream about what this was starting to look like. I went to Kansas and I met my brother's family that he married into. So I met my sister-in-law for the first time and then her family. And so we were praying <coughs> and the, her name's Rhonda. Uh, and she is married to Kathy's brother. So I don't know. Anyway, my cousins, aunties, friends, dogs. Anyway, so, but um, she was praying for me. And she says to me that she was praying and she said, she saw something very interesting. She was praying the night prior. She goes, I was praying for you because we were sick. I asked prayer team to pray for us. Something was wrong. It was really weird. It came out of nowhere. Same time, you know, if you're not aware, the Heinz family has been really sick, really bad. They were hospitalized. Um, there's a lot going on, right? And so I said, okay, we got to start praying. So she starts praying and she said, First of all, she goes, you've been like a sniper. She goes, there's no military. She goes, I see it clearly. You've been like a sniper. You've been, you've been, you've been systematically picking spots to get the gospel out, picking spots to how to hit the military with the gospel. And, and you've been using that kind of tactic. She goes, the Lord's going to change it where it's almost like a machine gun now. And she started to describe this machine gun in my hand. It was really interesting because I, a month prior, I had this dream that I was holding that weapon. It was a saw. Uh, a squad automatic weapon if you're not familiar with it and and so in the dream that i had months ago as well share with you something had happened in the united states and i thought physically at first I was like dude is this physical something had happened and all these vets that i knew were back and we all had our weapons and we were using makeshift gear that was half what we of the old stuff and then civilian attire and i was training young marines how to actually maneuver up a hill to take it and, and they were like enthusiastic about it. And then we would end up with these other Marines. And I saw these Marines, they were all on Camp Pendleton and they were young and they were all like this with their phone. And I would say, Hey, you got to get in the fight. And they would say, they would look up for a moment and go, why? We already been taken over and they go back to their phone. And I was like, something's wrong. And so there were people from here, from the anchor I saw, and they were ready to fight. And so I started praying. I was like, Lord, what is this? Because it started to bother me. And then I was like, is this physical? And then the Lord started to speak to me. And it wasn't physical. I started to realize within three weeks, it wasn't a physical war. It was a spiritual war. And so it was teaching the young ones how to step up for the gospel to fight. And some of the seasoned veteran ones to know how to do the same. And so... The ones that were looking at their phones were saying we're taken over already. They had no desire for the gospel. They had no desire to be free from Satan. They had no desire to be free from anything. They just wanted to be in their world of their phone and be trapped. And so it was really interesting because here we go to Kansas and this whole thing's happening. The enemy's attacking and Rhonda's praying for us. And then she says, I see this weapon. This is what it looks like. You're maneuvering faster. You're moving faster all over the place with it. And the Lord is, is changing things, how you're going to reach people and you're going to grow. The place is going to grow. The people are going to grow. And I was like, okay. And then she said this too. She said, the enemy hates what's happening at the anchor and he's starting to come after it now, which is very true. And that's why this week's been really weird. Yeah. It's, it's just been craziness. Now, you may be like, well, dude, what is this? Uh, this is it's coincidence. 
Well, people get sick all the time. Well, this happens. No, there's been really weird dreams, bad demonic dreams, tacking sleep, bad anxiety, can't think straight. I've been in a fog for three days praying through it. I couldn't think straight. And I, I couldn't, I, it was a mess. And I was like, Lord, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to teach Friday. I had to cancel Thursday. And I was like, I don't know if I got to teach Friday. I, Lord, I got to get in there. I woke up this morning with a song in my head really clear from the Lord. I felt like I was refreshed. I felt like I was ready. And then it was just bombarding, bombarding, bombarding. And it was beyond just travel stuff. And here's what I'm telling you guys this. And this is like what I want you guys to take. You cannot forget. You cannot forget what the Lord said to do. You cannot forget. We're going to share the gospel. Feed the people. Be a light in the darkness. Pray for the sick, pray for the needy, and, and learn how to fight and use your weapon. If you have not been doing devotional time, you need to get in your word. I can't harp on it enough. You need to know the word of God and get in it. You need to be hungry for it. And if you're called to the ministry, it's, you need to step up. It's time to step up. It's time to be committed. Look, Paul writes Timothy and says, says this, he says, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself in civilian affairs. Well, for those who really are serious about reaching people for the gospel, the ministry, you cannot entangle yourself with the things of the world. And each of you has a calling how to reach the person. But you can't run away from what God's doing. You cannot compromise. You cannot negotiate. You cannot say, if God's saying stay, you can't be like, well, God, I'll go do what you want me to do in some other state. That's not going to work. It will go backwards. I am called to California to stay here. Say what you want of the politics, the traffic, the school system. Whatever it is you got your gripe on about California, I get it. But I will go back to what the Lord originally told me. Stay on top of the mountain with me, and when all the chaos goes on the base, you'll be fine. And that's what's happening. The anchor is going to keep going forward and moving strong. We're going to keep serving the Lord. But I want you guys to take a hard assessment and a hard look of where you are in Jesus. If you have to, go home, read Isaiah 58 for yourself, and really look. Am I sharing the gospel? Am I walking in light? Am I really concerned about the broken or taking back what the locusts have stolen? You know, is your, are you excited about walking with Jesus? Is the word exciting to you? Are you, are you excited to learn the word of God? Or are you just kind of like, eh. you know, I couldn't get enough teachings. I want more and more. So I will continue to pray to see where we go from here. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to continue to be in prayer about the direction. We're going to be back in Genesis next week. We're going to keep pouring in. I already know we're going to the book of Ephesians afterwards. All right. That's where the Lord's taking us. It has to do with fighting. Um, I'm going to be praying about Tuesday night, where that's going to go, how things are going to happen. The men's group. I know there's been a desire for the women's group. I've had mo multiple women say, hey, when is there going to be a women's group? I need someone to teach the women's group. I've been training someone. I've been praying who can rise up to teach it. It's, it can't be a free-for-all. It can't just be, a, well, I feel this interpretation means that. What do you think it means? No way, Jose. It's got to be someone who really knows the word. I walked into a church where they were doing that with the book of Revelation, and they had 15 interpretations on Revelation 13. You can't have 15 interpretations on Revelation 13. And everyone thought their own interpretation was correct, and it was a soup sandwich in there. They didn't know the word. They didn't know there was a 1st Timothy. They didn't know there was a 2nd Timothy. They didn't even know the difference between 1st John and the Gospel of John. And they didn't even realize that the Holy Spirit was around in the Old Testament. I mean, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Do you know that there are people out there who have grown up and they think Jesus is Mexican? <laughs> they have no idea that he's a Jewish Messiah. That's my point. <laughs> you know so I want you to think about these things take them to heart do an inventory where you're at alright 
I'm praying through. You know, I've, some of you have already approached. Some of you have been pushing a little bit. Some of you have been running away. Some of you are hungry, but you're, you're too afraid to tell me you want to step up. And, and I will hold you to a standard, too. I'll tell you that right now. If you haven't figured that out already. I have a standard. I hold you to the standard. And because it can't be a free for all. It can't. It has to be very much how the Lord wants it to run. So take these things to heart. Pray about them. Uh, I'll end here. And we'll close in prayer. And then I'll take any questions online or in the room. All right. Well, if you're online and you have questions, start typing. Lord Jesus, thank you for tonight. Thank you for all you're doing. Lord, I pray for everyone here, Lord God, that they would continue to grow in you, grow strong in you, Lord. I pray that each person would know your word, be bold in the gospel, and just be filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be the real deal. And Lord, there's so many counterfeits out there. There's so many people who want to win arguments or they just want to push theology or they want to push what they learned at seminary. They, 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 Lord, I pray that we would show that we walk with you. That it would be like, just like it says in Acts, that the Pharisees saw they walked with Jesus for three years, that they would see that we walk with you, Lord. And there's a difference. So, Lord, I pray we would be strong in that way. Give us wisdom as we continue to grow. In Jesus' name, amen.